Hello and welcome to the channel of absolute quality and welcome back to another how to crucible that's what we're going to be doing today yet again the second one and there's going to be a third one for this week as well I'm gonna start posting three of these a week so get ready for the crazy amount of videos coming out so today we're looking at Atlanta D so we're looking at another submachine gun in a row here it is a kinetic you know submachine gun kinetic so it's in the primary slot and uh, I got it from the gunsmith I don't know where else you get this gun I just know that I did get it from Le gunsmith and he gave it to me a, a million times actually so I've gotten this a few times from him and basically only him I've never really gotten it from anywhere else I maybe got it from a you know Ingram but I don't know whatever moving on my opinion I was very very pleased with this with this submachine gun good times had been had good times finally a submachine gun that's good finally one that can hold its own in the battle of the crucible and fight other guardians off excellently excellently I'm so glad I finally found a submachine gun that could possibly do such a thing and I haven't even tried the Antiope D yet, so this only raises, raises my heights to new levels of excitement for submachine guns. I really enjoyed the submachine gun, I'm not gonna lie. I really, really enjoyed it, I did really well with it, I had my best game in Destiny with it, so I would say I had a very nice, pleasant time with it, and I very much did enjoy it. Playstyle, so obviously playstyle with a submachine gun is aggressive. Obviously, you have to push people, and with this one, it's not as dire that you need to push people, but it is in the mechanic of the way you should probably play with the weapon. It's not dire in the situations where you have to push them, otherwise you're not going to get any damage off of them. You, you, this gun does put out damage. It does do well. It does have. It does hold its own, I should say. So it's not like a dire situation that you're right next to him and sniffing, you know, his Cheeto breath. You can sit a little bit farther back, but just be aggressive with how you engage engagements. So that's basically everything, you know, just be aggressive. So for perks, it has... Okay, so Atlanta D doesn't have crazy perks. They're not crazy by any means, but I want to say that they are very, very helpful. So let's first look at the scopes. The first one is just an iron sight, and then the second one is a kind of a hollow... That's what you're going to see me using. I actually enjoyed that one a little bit more because it did give me a little bit extra range. And I do enjoy extra range quite a bit. So I'm going to go ahead and take the range on this situation. So it added range to the weapon, which made it, uh, you know, the effective damaging distance even farther. So that was a good thing that it needed to have. And then the second row is either, I think it was ricochet rounds or tactical mag. I went with Tactical Mag, I, th I think it was Tactical Mag, I'm not looking at it right now, so, but anyways, it did give me more stability in that sense, I think, oh no, Steady Rounds, Steady Rounds, my bad, it was Steady Rounds, um, Steady Rounds gives you a lot more stability, and it's actually kind of needed with this weapon, if you're not running Steady Rounds on it, it is a little bit crazy, a little bit off kilter, so you kind of want to use the Steady Rounds situation there, so, then you use Steady Rounds, so, First of all, we've added range and we've added stability. And then the last one is more stability, accuracy, target acquisition on the first trigger pull. So it does give you a little bit more help as you go straight into gunfights. So it kind of gives you a little bit of incentive to start the gunfights first. And when you're hitting the first shots of the gunfight, it's usually a better situation for you anyways because you got first shots on and that gives you a lot whole, you know, a, gr a great chance at finishing up the gunfight successfully. So three perks that were able to increase basically everything and make the gun that much more better i really like these perks they're not crazy you know they're not explosive rounds they're not firefly they're not uh armor piercing rounds they're just helpful and so for this i just think that because they're super helpful they're gonna get a seven perks is gonna get a seven now I mean, it might not match some of the other guns that I'm giving perks for 7s, but it's just, they're helpful. They really go cohesive, you know, there's cohesion with the weapon, and it just makes it really nice. It, they don't seem wasted, I should say. They don't seem like they were a waste of space. 
Moving on to long range, uh, much better than any previous sub I've used ever. So it's not great, but it is so much better. So by not great, I mean it isn't obviously a weapon that you want to use at long range. A submachine gun is obviously the wrong type of weapon to use at any long range distances. I'm going to say that now, but using this weapon, I did see a successful amount of range as in the gun was filling out its range category. So for submachine guns, I like to think that if people are 15 meters away from me, that is the distance that I need to fulfill with the weapon. The weapon needs to fulfill the damage that it needs at that range, and then anything further, it can start to drop off. And for me, it felt like 15, 10 to 15 meters was getting filled with the damage. The damage stayed there. I was still doing damage at that range. I was still able to aim at that range. It was still successful gunfights at that range. And because of that, it felt good. But obviously, there are weapons out there that, you know, like scouts and pulses, that shoot really far and all the way across the map. So you kind of have to think about that in perspective. So for range or long range, I'm giving it a five just because it does fill out my entire range but it's not, you know, it's not a auto rifle, it's not a scout rifle, it's not a pulse rifle. So, I give it a 5. Short range? Fantastic. I mean, it did fantastically well. I, I'm going to say it's going to get a 9. It's going to get a 9 right away, I'm just going to say that right away. But, um, I do believe that this weapon is very good. The only reason it doesn't get a 10, per se, is because there are times where maybe the accuracy was kind of wonky. I don't know. I feel like you have to get headshots in order to absolutely melt anyone with any weapon, right? And so with this one, I felt like I was more inclined to shoot the head than anything. And because of that, it kind of made the body shots a little bit less. And they took the gunfights a little bit longer, I should say. I don't know. I don't think it's a 10. I do think it's a 9, though. It is a strong, strong 9. Just don't think it hit that 10th spot i wasn't melting every single weapon with it obviously if other people pulled out other submachine guns i was having to fight those and so i'm gonna give it a very strong nine at short range so let's move on to effectiveness the math and equation stuff so for our kills we had 237 and for our deaths we had 124 if you add those up we get a total of 361. I did have a KD of a 1.91 with this submachine gun. So that was a very, very good stat for a submachine gun. It's the best stat for any submachine gun I've ever used. So for the equation, throw that up. For K, for K, for the kills, we're going to put 237. And then for the T, for the total, we're going to put 361. We're going to do that calculation, and that's going to get us a 6.6. .6. Overall rating is now a little bit more and a little bit uh, more math, obviously, and some equations. So let's throw that equation up. And so we're going to take all of our numbers on the bottom and we're going to throw them into that equation right there. And then we're going to add them all up and then divide it by four. And that's going to get us a 6.9. So if you add all those numbers up that are on your screen right now, all five, you're going to get a total of a 34.5. 34.5. So let's go into the ranking. The ranking process is when... You uh, I'll explain it. <laughs> Sorry, it's brain fart there. So the ranking process, we're going to take our total number that we just got, our 34.5, and we're going to rank it against all the submachine guns I've done so far. Then we're going to rank it against all of the weapons in Destiny 2, all the autos, all the pulses, all the hand cannons, everything. We're going to rank it against everything. So first, let's do submachine guns. So in the ranking for submachine guns, it takes first by a mile. Uh, maybe not a mile, but like three points. Uh, a Hero's Burden was up there quite high, but it does take it, and A Hero's Burden is actually the highest, like, I think it's the only other one in the 30s, I think, I'm thinking this, I think, I'm not looking at the list right now, but I think it's over there, so that's what it's going to be for submachine guns, it's going to take the first spot, thankfully, and then we're going to head into all of Destiny 2, all of Destiny 2, it does take the 18th spot in the list, so it does break the top 20, you know, obviously we have a lot of strong runners up there. We have the Mida, we have Uriel's Gift, all the, you know, the nice runners up there. So any submachine guns kind of have a difficult time fighting anything that actually does long-range damage. But I do believe this is a very good short-range gun. So it does deserve the top 20 spot, that is for sure. So 
Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, go ahead and hit the like button. And if you'd like to see more content from me, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. I'm always here posting videos, so I'll see you later.